Here are some of the stories we have in this edition of VA News. A positive approach to positively everything. VA's presence is welcome at a big DC Health Expo. And a look from the inside of the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project. Hello, I'm Jeanette Mendy with the Office of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs. And I'm Darren Pope with the Veteran Employment Services Office. You're watching VA News. has dramatically improved its delivery of care and benefits to veterans in rural areas, improved access to VA for all veterans, widened its reach to get more veterans to enroll with VA, dramatically reduced the benefits backlog, and cut by one quarter the number of homeless veterans in America. It is our intention to repeat that statement this time next year. Let's begin with rural veterans. Scott Malone, the videographer at the Salt Lake City VA Medical Center, who passed away far too young last year, sent us this story last year about the Utah hospital's efforts to take VA to veterans in remote locations. Hospital leaders and staff want to reach even further and held meetings in mid-January with veterans to expand the outreach efforts. The committee members come from all over the country. They are experts in healthcare delivery and have varied military backgrounds. Their mission, their promise, is to enhance health care services for veterans in rural areas. The challenge, as you're aware, in Utah, below the national average in enrollees in the VA health care system, below the national average in Comp and Pen. But many states are like this, so we're constantly trying to help those folks learn about their, many of them just don't know about their benefits. Director Steve Young talks about expanded services. But we are continuing to look and to look for those population centers uh, where we can, where it makes sense to put a uh, small clinic, a place that can provide basic primary care, basic mental health care um, in, in more rural communities. The forum proved to be an excellent platform for brainstorming and idea sharing. How can we get the rural citizens involved in rural veteran health care? Community liaisons educated in VA benefits was one answer that followed, as outreach seemed to be the reoccurring theme. We're in the trenches. We're down there working with the veterans. We know their issues, and when they come to us, we want to be able to give them the right answers to get to the right people to give them the help that they need. VA is there. They've got all the programs. It, I think it's our responsibility as veterans helping veterans to get to the services that they need. Jill Atwood, VA Salt Lake City Healthcare System. At the Washington, D.C. VA Medical Center's 2011 Winter Haven Homeless Veterans Stand Down, Secretary and Mrs. Shinseki each told us on camera that they were committed to ending homelessness. They talked of how heart-wrenching it was to see service members they knew in uniform reduce the living on the street. And I think one of the things that hit me hardest when I first got here was uh, someone explained to me that Veterans lead the nation in homelessness, depression, substance abuse, suicides, and we're right up there in joblessness as, as well. And after having spent 38 years knowing those youngsters while they served in uniform, uh, that statement was a, a real kick in the gut. The number of homeless veterans is down by 24 percent since 2011, and there are indications it continues to fall. We produced this show before the Winter Haven on January 25th, but we plan to talk again with Secretary Shinseki to get his take on how VA is doing to meet the goal to end veterans' homelessness by next year. We'll have some of his comments and a report on Winter Haven in the next VA News. The first ever national outreach campaign at VA is being executed as we speak to help meet VA and White House goals to increase access to VA benefits and services. Efforts also continue to reduce the benefits backlog, down considerably from a year ago. And veteran unemployment is currently at 5.5 percent, the lowest rate in five years. In 2014, the pending inventory of claims was reduced by 22 percent. Claims more than 125 days old were reduced by 36 percent. Claim level accuracy was increased to 90 percent overall and 97 percent for medical issues 
and 99.9% of two-year or older claims and 97% of those over one year old were processed. We've got much to be proud of at VA, but it's really not like we can hang our hat on what's done when there is so much more to do. Let's have an even better 2014 in everything we do. VBA employees helped veterans sign up for their benefits. And VHA employees gave them simple health checks at this year's NBC for Health and Fitness Expo on January the 11th. This is Army veteran Janice Pavlik getting help from benefits employee Janae Bailey to sign up for e-benefits. Air Force veterans Rebecca and Matthew Conlon receive health checks. Army veteran Kevin Wilson brought his two daughters and son to the health fair, and they watched him while he got his blood pressure checked. The D.C. VA Medical Center passed out materials to keep veterans in touch. The Library of Congress is famous for cataloging some of America's greatest historical treasures, from every piece of written material to more notable editions like the Gettysburg Address and Thomas Jefferson's Library. The amount of documents, films, books, and photos housed at the Washington, D.C. landmark is staggering. So it should come as no surprise that the Library of Congress, through the American Folk Life Center, is committed to capturing the legacy of the American veteran. Each year, five to 6,000 veterans submit their oral history, and some even donate their personal collections of correspondence, diaries, and memorabilia. The project ensures that our nation's future generations will have firsthand accounts of what happened from the people who actually made the history. Recently, Under Secretary for National Cemeteries, Steve Moreau, sat down with Bob Patrick, the director of the Veterans History Project, to talk about his service. Here is Adam Anisich with that story. The Veterans History Project has been around for 14 years. Under Secretary for Memorial Affairs, Steve Murrow recently provided his personal account of military service to the Veterans History Project. We took this opportunity to take a closer look at how the Veterans History Project works and why it's important. Well, the Veterans History Project is a congressionally mandated effort. Actually, Congress legislated this, uh, this project into, a, into effect in the year 2000. We want any veteran who is, uh, who is with us today, over 22 million that, that are alive, to participate in the Veterans History Project. A lot of veterans know their story uh, and like to tell their story. Uh, but before doing an interview, I, I would encourage a veteran to kind of sit down and get those memories in order. But really kind of reflect on what their military experience was, what it was all about, what it felt like to go to basic training, what it felt like to step off a plane in Vietnam, hit a beach in, uh, in Europe, uh, be in the cold in Korea, all those kind of personal experiences that a veteran goes through. And then kind of reflect back on what it meant to them in the end, what it has meant to them during the course of their life. And I think with anyone who served in the, in the military, it's been an important part of their life. The Veterans History Project is a very important part of the Library of Congress. We have Thomas Jefferson's Library, we have the Gettysburg Address, we have presidential papers, and we have papers from Supreme Court justices, senators, and congressmen. But we also need to have the stories um, and memories of America's veterans as part of that story. That fills out what is the story of this country, and people need to know what that is. History is not just told from the top down, but also from the bottom up. Um, some people's memories are preserved in books, but some people's memories can be found in snapshots, in letters, um, in an oral interview, in the stories that they tell from father to son or um, father to children. So um, that's why those stories are important. Um, and that is part of the full American story that we need to preserve for future generations. The Veterans History Project is a collection that features first-hand accounts of America's wartime veterans, encouraging veterans to share their personal experiences and accounts of their military service. As part of the American Folklife Center, the Veterans History Project will preserve these individual accounts in the Library of Congress for future generations. This is the greatest source of information in the world. It's important that we have those, these stories here, making sure that generations from now, people can come to this library, probably go online to get it by then, and hear and see these stories that, uh, that happened in the 20th and 21st century. In a lot of cases, veterans have not told their story. Um, and this provides a serious way for them to tell it, for the family to have a copy of it, and again, as I said, for the nation to have a copy of it. 
Women veterans in Georgia recently attended a conference at the Atlanta VA Medical Center to learn and discuss all issues affecting them. Here is Judy Howell with the story. Today and seeing all the other women, you just know you're not alone in the traumas and the difficulties. The VA and the state of Georgia reached out to its women veterans to offer them support in a special way. The first annual Women Veterans Conference was held at the Atlanta VA Medical Center. Georgia's women veterans are 13.5% of the total veteran population of that state, compared to the 9.8% national average. In Georgia and many other states, they are a growing population with unique needs. Deborah Jones and Shelly Ann Simpson, with help from many others, organized this event. This was my way of showing the women veterans of Georgia that I care that Georgia Department of Veterans Services cares. The conference theme, A Purposeful Life, included a mixture of inspiration and dedication. The inspiration was provided by veteran Antoinette Thompson, who delivered the address on the conference theme. The dedication was shown by state and local organizations that helped the women veterans of Georgia. I know when I came back, it was hard for me to transition back into society being when I got activated, I lost two years of my daughter's life, and that was very hard for me to gain back. Throughout the day, women veterans heard inspirational speeches, received makeovers, and selected clothing. This conference was the first held for women veterans in Georgia. To the staff at the Georgia Department of Veterans Service, Atlanta VA Medical Center staff, and all the local organizations, we thank you for your efforts and assistance to women veterans. We encourage any veteran, especially women veterans, to explore their VA benefits by contacting your state VA office or the Department of Veterans Affairs. Did you know, for the past four years, Vietnam veteran and longtime veterans advocate John Garcia has directed the VA Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. Garcia is the personable former State Veterans Affairs Director in his beloved New Mexico. He is leaving VA to return to the land of enchantment on February the 1st. Garcia has plans to start up his consulting business again but it will clearly include his service to veterans continuing at a high level. The still serving to be released the first week of February will be a salute to John Garcia and his commitment to veterans. Here's a clip from our next still serving. You know, when you're 18 you're, and you're raised very idealistically and um, uh, it was a different world for me. You learn to adapt, you learn to adjust. You learn what brotherhood really means, I think. I think Vietnam uh, forged me. It's like baptism by fire, you know, you come out stronger for it. There's no black and white, there's just gray. And I think um, commitment and duty, um, someone's word is his bond. I am who I am because of my service to my country. I'm proud of the fact that I'm a Vietnam vet, that I served my country, and I served honorably. That is all we have for this VA News. Thank you for tuning in today. Watch for more on the Winter Haven Stand Down for Homeless Veterans in the next show. I'm Darren Pope. And I'm Jeanette Mendy. Have a great day, and take care, everyone.